Cause like a winter Welcome and thank you for joining us. Today we're going to be exploring the world of boxing. That's right. We're going to take a look at the Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather fight coming up in May. And with us today we have Ryan O'Hara, play-by-play boxing announcer at Iron Boy Promotions, as well as a boxing analyst at The Boxing Voice. Let's welcome Mr. O'Hara to the circle. How are you, Mr. O'Hara? Doing great, sir. How are you guys doing today? Wonderful. Especially now that the fight's finally been sealed. So we got this big fight coming up. Floyd Mayweather... Manny Pacquiao, I mean, the last time I saw a fight this big, I think it was Holyfield taking on Tyson. Um, what do you think is the big significance of Mayweather fight? I think the big significance is that they're finally, is it's finally happening. It's a fight that we didn't expect to happen um, because, you know, you have problems with drug testing. We had problems with, you know, purse splits. And finally, they came to a consensus. And I'll say, the first time this fight was announced, I'd never kissed a girl in my life. So I'm... <laughs> <laughs> times times have changed uh, since um, the fight was first talked about, and I'm just happy the fight's going to get on. You got two very unique styles: Floyd Mayweather, one of the best defensive uh, boxers um, of our generation, actually, if not the best defensive boxer we've, we've ever I've ever seen. Manny Pacquiao, explosive on offense, um, defense. He's a little little slippery, a little slippery slope for them there for him there, but it's going to be a close fight. Floyd Mayweather struggled against Southpaw against boxers with a southpaw stance in the past. And um, Manny Pacquiao struggled against defensive uh, fighters in the past, notably Juan Manuel Marquez. But the, the thing with this fight is that Floyd Mayweather's greatest asset is also his greatest weakness. Because if he stays in the defensive stance too long, Manny Pacquiao is known for his explosive combinations. If he can trap Mayweather on the, ro- on the ropes early in the fight, could be a turning point. Because Mayweather's no- notoriously not a fast starter. Manny Pacquiao's a fast starter. So the, in the first half of the fight, you can... You can um, see Mayweather trying to feel out, um, see what Manny Pacquiao's made of. But as you know, Mayweather's the best at adjustments. And so the second half of the fight, it's going to be very interesting to see who comes out on top because the judges have proven that they like Manny Pacquiao's style more than Floyd Mayweather's. Mayweather's, oh. Mayweather's style is more he's going to time you with one punch, maybe, maybe you know, a one-two. Manny Pacquiao just goes right at you. Making, he's capable of landing seven to ten punch combinations. And that, that can have a huge impact on a scorecard. Do we know who the judges are already? I am not aware of that so far. Um, when it comes to the referees, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Tony Weeks, Kenny Bayless, uh, mm-hmm. or, or even Jane Aidy. Jane Aidy's, you know, like six foot five, and I believe he's an Army veteran. You don't want to mess with Jane Aidy. So they might uh, <laughs> have a guy in there. It's like, okay, guys, enough. But Do we know how big? What was the, the, the final um, purse size on this fight? Um, I'm not actually sure on that. I know that Floyd Mayweather is expected to make at least $120 million, if I'm not mistaken, around 120 to 150 Manny Pacquiao is going to make around $80 million. Regardless um, if they lose or win. Regardless of losing or winning. And there's no rematch clause. There's no rematch clause. No um, rematch clause? Well, here, the thing with that wow. rematch clause is that you don't, you don't necessarily have to have a rematch clause to have a rematch. You know, Floyd Mayweather put a rematch clause in for Robert Guerrero, and he beat him so badly, they decided, well, we're not going to have a rematch clause because that would be pointless. So they got rid of that. And if Manny Pacquiao beats Mayweather, it's more than likely that he's going to be the A-side and negotiates for the next time. And Manny Pacquiao can win the fight too because, like I said, the judges, they tend to like Pacquiao's style. So even if Mayweather lands more punches, he may, may still lose the fight. So It sounds like to me you're thinking this fight's going to go all the way. Oh, the, fight, the fight's definitely going to go all the way, I think. But... Anything can happen. Pacquiao can knock Mayweather out. Mayweather's capable of knocking uh, Pacquiao out. And both these guys haven't knocked out somebody in quite a while. Now, Mayweather's last knockout, official knockout, was against Victor Ortiz in 2011. But there's a lot of controversy around that with it being a cheap shot and everything. But before that, it wasn't Carlos Baldwin. I don't remember the last knockout uh, that he's had on top of my head. But it's, it's definitely been a while. For Manny Pacquiao, it was Mikel Cotto back in 2000, 2009 in November. 2009 was his last knockout? Yeah, his last knockout. So he's been um, going the distance lately then. Absolutely. Uh, Antonio Mar- the, the Antonio Margarito fight, which was um, just before the Shane Mosley fight with Pacquiao, should have been stopped well before the 12th round. And it went all the way. Antonio Margarito needed three facial sur- uh, reconstructive surgeries after that fight. There's no, there, was no, there was no reason for uh, the referee to have that fight 
keep on going. It was, you know, kind of a de- dereliction of duty on his on his behalf. But at the same time, Margarito wanted to keep fighting. So at the same time, it was his responsibility too. Three surgeries on his face. Wow. Mm-hmm. It, it was pretty brutal. Yeah, it sounds like it. Let me ask you this question. Uh, the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight seems to have brought boxing back to the forefront. It was kind of disappearing there for a while. Um, at least in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong. You can tell me that. Does it have a big significance for boxing in, in the sense of bringing it back to the public's mm-hmm. attention? Well, it do, it does it does bring more attention to boxing because you have two of the best guys, two of the best fighters of this generation back in. But the term we hear a lot is saving boxing, and yeah. in my opinion, boxing doesn't really need to be saved. You know, boxing is the most heterogeneous sport in, in the world. Right as we as we speak right now, we have twenty three. We have uh, world champions from over twenty three countries um, in the sport, and UFC can't even contest to that. They have world champions from two countries: the United States and Brazil. That's it. Um, boxing, it's all over the place. You have Mexico. <laughs> We're going after UFC early in this interview. <laughs> oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> but I yeah, know, you know, we have um, a couple of those guys. You know, bo- on boxing too. has always been a sport for the poor, and what I mean by that is that the boxers that have to put put their effort into the sport usually are very successful. Manny Pacquiao had to fight his heart out, you know, to uh, help his family survive when he was in the Philippines, and he put everything into it, and it's shown. Um, you know, eight eight division world champion. I can't, I can't even imagine anyone else do anyone else doing that. But, but Pacquiao did it. Um, you know, Floyd May was another example. He he put, dedicated himself to his craft, and it showed. But on Friday night fights, which I'll be covering later tonight, Steve Vacosa last weekend. You know, he was undefeated for the first part of his career, and then suffered an injury, and and didn't come back for twelve years. He was two and zero. Oh, and he fought Donovan Dennis last weekend. Steve Vacosa said before the fight, "Ah oh, man, this is just fun, man. I'm just here to have fun. That's not something you say before a fight because Donovan Dennis had something else in his mind. Well, if he's here for fun, I'm here to kill him. And, well, Donovan De- Dennis did just that. He, he knocked him out in the fourth round. So, I hope that was fun for him. Uh, I don't think, <laughs> don't think it was fun uh, for his family, though. I, yeah. I, yeah, I mean – it's unfortunate that he had that injury that kept him out 12 years, but I would have just, I just would have stayed, I just would have stayed retired if I were him. Sounds like it. Did anything happen to him after that knockout? Um, he wasn't, I don't think he was injured, but you know, I noticed he, he would get hit and he would actually turn his back. He turned his back toward, like, away from the boxer and the referee was like, oh, don't do that. Man. That's dangerous. And then I was like, man, this fight's got to be stopped. He's not even trying at this point. Um, I went back in. Well, that's yep. another show for another day. Um, so you think boxing is doing fine? You think it's hanging in there? Uh, has the media? There's an argument out there that the major media has abandoned boxing. They don't even put it on a lot of the newspapers anymore. What do you think about that? You know, I've no, I've noticed that. I've not, there's not a lot. Of, um, you know, not not a lot of folks are really covering boxing. Um, of course, I. If I if I were biased, I would just pay attention to to the people I pay attention to, you know, like Kevin Iola, like Michelle Rosado, uh, like Lizzie Bowling, um, Bollinger. We kind of, we kind of have our own clan. It's kind of like NASCAR, you know. If people aren't talking about NASCAR, we just focus we just focus on the people that are covering the sport. And you know, going back to the sport, um, you know, being saved, Al Heyman, you know, created Premier Boxing Champions, which. As it looks right now, it's actually it's actually helping to bring boxing back into the mainstream. You got you know Keith Thurman fighting Robert Guerrero on free network television. It's pretty cool. Adrian Broner fighting John Molina. Oh, Broner's um, back, huh? Yeah, Broner's gonna be back fighting John Molina. I think those are gonna be some really great fights. Um, you know, stylistically, it's gonna be great. Thurman and Guerrero, and it's gonna be an absolute war. There's gonna be swollen eyes and blood and exactly what the fans want to see. And the fans want to see the best fighting the best. And I think. Al Heyman has a reputation of not doing that. For example, Danny Garcia fighting uh, Rod Salka instead of defending his championship. Um, Danny Garcia won't be fi- will be fighting Lamont Peterson on on uh, one of the Premier Boxing um, cards, but it'll be a catchweight fight um, at 142 pounds, uh, not a non-title fight. So, yeah, I, I think boxing has its weaknesses. Every sport has its weaknesses, but I think. Um, I think we're doing just fine the, uh, the way we are right now. Do you think the internet's helping a lot? Absolutely. Social media, it's you know, using the hashtag boxing on Twitter. It's a great way to 
um, interact with other people around the world. You can, you know, cuss at each other, try to see how you meet, <laughs> meet in an agreement. I, I don't really get into that, but some people are really passionate to the point that they're, you know, willing to fight over a keyboard. Um, but keeping the sport uh, relevant. Welcome to Adelante. This is Adelante Recovery, and my name is Yvette Kuglin, and I'm part of the staff. Adelante Recovery Center has helped people in dual diagnosis for five years. We accept most PPO insurances and provide luxury accommodations and 24-hour support. To speak with an admissions counselor, call 1-888-242-4455. A lot of time we don't even know what's wrong with us and sometimes we need to get away to figure that out. So if you want to go for a little retreat out in Corona Del Mar, which is a confidential location, we're here to help. So we're only a phone call away. Thank you. What was the hashtag you mentioned again? Uh, hashtag boxing. Hashtag um, boxing. It's, kind of like, it's kind of like a Twitter thing. You see things that are trending. Um, and it's, it's a great way to interact with, um, with your peers. Also, if there's a fight like Mayweather Pacquiao, hashtag Mayweather Pacquiao, hashtag boxing. Oh my gosh, this, the styles between this fight, you can go into details and you know, it, it, it brings you, brings you closer to people and uh, you, you start to come in contact with people you never thought you'd be in contact before. Um, you know, I'm bringing up a NASCAR uh, reference, but I never thought I'd ever talk to Jerry Bunkowski in my life. And I told him, man, I've been, I've been reading your article since I was five years old. And well, he told me, he told me now I feel really old now. Thanks. But <laughs> <laughs> that's the good, interesting thing is our show is about psychology. And that's one of the things about it. Boxing does have that ability to bring people together. Mm -hmm. It seems a lot of times our differences can be set aside, especially like a Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather fight. It can bring them together at this moment. It's interesting. Yeah. It's a very interesting concept. Interesting it's, it's, idea. It's going to be interesting with the fans because you have you have Pacquiao fans who are all about oh man all the action. You have um, fans that are very fascinated uh, and and quite frankly really impressed with Mayweather's defensive capabilities. And other people are flat out bored from his defense. Other people they, they don't like defense. They like all offense. There's really and then there's some people who are in the middle. They kind of like want to see a mixture of both um, of different types of skills, but. It's going to be interesting. You know, I've, sure. had, I've had a lot of conversations with both sides uh, regarding this fight. Um, some have been very, very productive, and a lot of them haven't been nowhere close to that. But that's, that's how it is in every sport. Let me ask you this question. They're getting a little older now, these guys, like we all are. But mm -hmm. are we getting the real Mayweather and the real Pacquiao here? Or are we getting a little bit different types of guys because they're not the same in their, as they were in their prime? Mm-hmm. It's it's not quite the same, but they haven't dropped that much. It's it's not the big. It's, I mean, the fight should have happened in 2010 when they first you know started negotiating, but everything fell apart. Um, Mayweather slipped a little bit on defense. He took a, he's been taking a lot of hard leather. Um, for example, Shane Mosley rocked him with a with a you know a huge right cross in 2010 in their fight, and then proceeded to dominate Mosley the rest of the fight because you know at that point Mosley was an older fighter. And the people are going to say, "Oh, you're making an excuse for you're making an excuse for Mosley. Like Mayweather beat him. Yeah, he beat him. But fans first called for that fight nine years before that, in 2001. In 2001, Mosley was the man. He beat Oscar De La Hoya in 2000. He ended up beating him again in 2003. Although you know, kind of controversial decision, especially you know with uh, the Balco scandal. That's um, right. Yeah. But that that fight would have been amazing back in the early 2000s. 2010 was still a good fight, but it was nowhere close to what it should uh, what should have been because Mosley, you know, wasn't in his prime. Um, the Delahoya Mayweather fight was called for in 2004. And Mayweather called Delahoya out. The problem with that is that Delahoya at the time was fighting at 160 pounds. Now we remember in 2008, Delahoya went from 154 to 147 to fight Manny Pacquiao and drained himself so bad. That he just got picked apart. Imagine if he went from 160 to 147, what, which was what Mayweather was 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 asking for. It would have been even worse if it was 160 to 147. That's a yeah. major drop. Now they did the fight at 154 in 2007. Was Delahoy the same fighter? He, he he honestly he looked pretty good in that fight. It's just that you know Mayweather Mayweather was faster. Delahoy wasn't the same fighter. He's an old 34 because he fought you know Cort 
Tay, he fought Whitaker, he fought Julio Cesar Chavez. He fought a lot of these rough, tough guys. Mayweather, on the other hand, he's fought a lot of guys, but the legends, quote unquote, that he's fought, they weren't the same legends they were. Arturo Gatti was completely washed out when he when he fought him. Um, Carlos Baldemir wasn't the same. And, uh, you know, I think the only pr- in, in prime fighter that Mayweather's beaten is Canelo Alvarez. But Canelo Alvarez b- beat himself in that fight because he decided that he was going to focus, he was going to focus on defense. He said that, you know, Mayweather's got to watch out for my defense because I'm, I've been really, really, and, you know, improving on my defensive skills. But I said to myself, but you've only been starting to improve defense for the last couple of years. Mayweather's been defensive technician, you know, even before his professional debut in 1996. And so I said to myself right then, Alvarez is going to lose 12 rounds nothing. And that's how I scored it. It, it, it was a blowout. Um, 12 rounds minus, nothing? Yeah. I, I scored it 12 rounds nothing for Mayweather, although C.J. Ross is blind and had it even. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this question then. Um, I won't pick on Mayweather here because I know other fighters have done it as well, but uh, is this a strategy that they're using when they pick these guys, they pick their opponents who are out of their prime, or is it just business circumstances? You know, we, we just can't get the fight together and it's just the way it happens. Which way do you think it leans more towards? It's a combination of both, in my opinion. Um, I think what Mayweather's strategy is, oh, if you make the people wait as long as possible, they're going to be like, oh, finally it's happened. We've got to put our money into this pay-per-view, pay $100 or however. But at the same time, it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like avoiding, it, in a way it's also avoiding, because, Man, because Manny Pacquiao is not, not the same Manny Pacquiao he was in 2009 when he was, that bla- I mean, his hand speed is still pretty dang fast. But it's not the blazing speed it was in 2009. Um, is Mayweather's defense as fast as well, or? or his, de- his defense is not as good. Is not as good as it used to be. He's been, like I said, he got caught by Mosley in, in their fight. He also got caught several times in the first fight uh, with Marcos Maidana. Ended up getting cut for the first time in 18 years um, in that fight. And in the second fight, he caught a right hand in the third round, wobbled on the ropes. But by that time, the round had ended, so Maidana wasn't able to capitalize. Madonna's um, the, the same shot. guy that beat Broner, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, Madonna beat Adrian Broner, knocked him down twice. Um, that was a hell of a fight. Oh, absolutely. That was and a wonderful fight. Bro- Broner instigated uh, Madonna's anger. So uh, <laughs> he kind of had it coming to him. But you know what? Bro- I think Broner is starting to learn now how to be, how to be professional. Uh, he has the birth of his son. Um, he's, getting, he's engaged to be married. And, he, John, and he's got he's to learn how not... I guess to be less goading in the ring, uh, don't taunt as much because he's finding John, John Molina is a guy that you know has the ability to change change a fight in one instant. Uh, he did that against Mickey Bay. Mickey Bay, he's gonna remember that fight for the rest of his life. He dominated the fight and then got knocked out late. Um, oh, that's right. You know, Mick, here's the thing that I'm worried about with Broner is that if if he's not if he's not a hundred percent for the fight against Molina, he could be in trouble because if you know John Molina fought Lucas Matisse. Lucas Matisse is one of the, you know, uh, toughest guys in the sport. Molina dropped Matisse twice, once in the second, once in the fifth. But Matisse got back up to knock him out, knocked him down three times. Now, Marcos Maidana knocked Adrian Broner down twice. Broner didn't recover from that. And Matisse punches much harder than, than Marcos Maidana. So if Broner gets knocked down by Molina, the question is, is he going to be able to get back and win the fight? Or is he going to be... The same Broner we saw against Maidana. Once he gets knocked down, you know, psych- mentally he's just not in there. Yeah, he kind of did lose it at the end of that fight. We have a few minutes left. Um, okay. We have what we call a fastball question. I'll change the tone for this show. We'll make it a one-two combination, and we'll see how Mr. O'Hara hangs on to those two questions. But those are coming in a little bit. Um, first question is, before those two, are what upcoming boxers do you see in the future of boxing that really look good? Oh, Terrence Crawford, fighter of the year right there. Terrence Crawford, has he, he's the perfect boxer. He's got offense. He's got defense. Uh, he's fast. Um, I would love to see Terrence Crawford fight Manny Pacquiao before he retires. I think that would be, I think that'd be a great way. Um, but I don't know if it's possible. I don't think it's, if it's going to happen. You know, if, if Pacquiao and Mayweather decide to close out their careers by fighting each other, I don't think Crawford's going to get a chance. But let's say Pacquiao beats Mayweather, no rematch. I think a fight with Terrence Crawford would be a perfect way to go out, win or lose. How's the heavyweight division looking? Heavyweight division is still, I mean, the heavyweight division is still lacking. You do, you do have a new star in Deontay Wilder, 
but that's not enough to bring the heavyweight division back. We're going to need some more folks. Um, some of the top ranked guys, you know, and Andy, Ru- I watched an Andy Ruiz fight um, during Iron Boy 18. Um, he's not going to be able to fight a Klitschko, I don't think, and not at this point. But like I said, Wilder, Stavern, he he's pretty solid. But I mean, the heavyweight division is isn't there. The the action that you're going to find in boxing is going to be in the smaller divisions, like welterweight, uh, middleweight, Gennady Golovkin. If if Gennady Golovkin can move up to let's say super middleweight to light heavyweight in that zone, um, I don't know if he's going to go to 175, but he'd be pretty good at 168. Um, let's see another fighter, Diego De La Hoya. Absolutely, Diego, um, Oscar De La Hoya's uh, young son. Oh, um, really? Yep. All right. You ready for your one-two combo questions? Ready for it. I got my boxing gloves in the living room, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If, let's say, Mr. O'Hara has got the magical powers granted to him, and he could pick two boxers from any era in the last 100 years, who would you match up against each other? Man. Man it's always a tough question for you guys. Man, I, you know, we, are, we already got Rocky Marciano, Muhammad Ali in the computer fight. I watched that, and it was kind of hard to watch because the commentary was so bad. But that, <laughs> that's just me. Um, let's see. It, it's going to be interesting. I'll, I'll, you know, I, I'm, I'm, think, I'm thinking of something really quick. I'm trying to think, think of something. I'd like to see Muhammad Ali and Vitaly Klitschko. Oh, that's a good one. Everything Muhammad Ali, that. Vitaly Klitschko. That would yeah. be a great fight. I actually ran a simulator on that. Um, it actually was kind of close, and Klitschko got got dropped late in the fight. And Vitaly <laughs> Klitschko has only been knocked down once in his career ever, and he's never taken an eight count in boxing. He's never taken a count. He really? has fallen from a slip, but he was knocked oh. out by Pelly Reed um, in a kickboxing event. That's the only time I've seen Klitschko go down was in that one fight. And that would be unpleasant. And last question for you: Have you, or do you hope to, ever date a ring girl? <laughs> Whatever date a ring girl, I mean, it'd be possible if they weren't so much taller than me. <laughs> like, I got long arms, but you know, it doesn't really help me much. But yeah. Well, thank you so much again, Mr. O'Hare, <laughs> for being on here. Boxing analyst for the Boxing Voice, boxing announcer for Iron Boy Promotions. Thank you again, Mr. O'Hare, for this insight to the fight coming up Mayweather and Pacquiao. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Remember, our motto is simple wherever there's psychology involved, Even in the boxing ring, we're there. See you next time, everyone.